Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining me today. I'm excited to have a discussion on revitalizing legacy applications for Azure and it's really its effects on nonprofits. I'm your moderator, Josh Doherty, and joining me today is Rakesh Anantharaman, Practice Director for Application Modernization, and Michael Kimbrough, who is a Senior Architect and Practice Lead. Thank you both for joining me today for the conversation. Thank you. Glad Thanks. to be here. Thanks. Great. So, I mean, today we're talking all about how application modernization can have a big impact for nonprofits. So I want to just jump right in and Rakesh, have you share a little bit about what mm -hmm. application modernization is if someone isn't familiar and why nonprofits specifically should be concerned about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So as far as app mod is concerned, think of this more like a, a practice of updating older software for uh, so we can have newer taking a newer computing approach to it as well as updating it to newer languages a newer framework and new infrastructure that's going to you know infrastructure platform so i know legacy is kind of a bad word now but you know this is again uh, re rearchitecting rehosting or replatforming -pla an older application or a suite of applications uh, so it's kind of future proof so kind of to put it simply app mod is, is putting new tools and processes in place that help the evolving needs of the customer and your organization and to accelerate growth and, and achievement of your mission and what of that mission be. In this case, we are talking about nonprofits. So in this case, nonprofits, I would say, you know, with the, there are a few reasons why nonprofits need to kind of think about modernization and, and go through the modernization journey, as, as I like to call it. Um, with the pandemic that happened, you know, uh, nonprofits work a lot of, you know, based on funding. So with the, with the pandemic, funding is really flat. It has definitely changed donor patterns whenever we talk to the uh, to our customers here, and modernizing them, modernizing their applications, their legacy applications allows these nonprofits to increase their impact and kind of provides an easier management to leverage new platforms using the newer technologies. And we can definitely use something like you know how do we bring in data? What are the trends looking like? social media, how do you use AI? Because that they collect a lot of data, definitely a lot of data. And how are they using this data to go to go identify those those new donors, right? Like how do they how do they get new funding in is something that they think about, you know, uh, that, that's important for nonprofits. The second would be providing the tools and resources that would create ef efficiencies in, in the organization itself um, that allow you to do more mm -hmm. with, with less. So there are a few things that we'll be kind of talking about today, right? One would be efficiency, scalability, uh, security mainly, and, and mainly focusing on the cost as well, especially since we're talking about nonprofits here. Uh, third point would be allowing for better marketing analytics. Uh, so showing data in a way that allows people to take action where they were not able to do before. So making sense of the data, creating good warehousing patterns, creating good data mining options there. And, and with the with the latest uh, technology, you know, the latest advancements on Azure, uh, it's important for nonprofits to go through that modernization journey. And the last but not the least, this is something that we talk to our customers on a day in and day out basis, security, 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 right? Because with the amount of uh, money that's flowing in, it's always important to talk about security, you know, PII data that's always there. And, and that's something that they have to consider. So these are a, a few reasons uh, that, that we, when we talk to the customer, we say, hey, these are the things that you have to think about when you're going through the modernization journey itself. Michael, I'd love to throw it over to you now and talk about like Rakesh walk through the benefits or the reasons why to move forward with an app mod initiative. Um, what are some of the drawbacks of not taking action if you're your nonprofit thinking about app mod? Yeah, sure. So I think the the biggest drawbacks are that you're losing out on these opportunities to to grow your your donor base, to you know try to reach your your mission uh, faster to to broaden that. Um, there's so many good uh, technologies, so many useful technologies um, in Azure that you could take advantage of to do that. Um, and, and another aspect of it is really. Um, looking where you want to spend your limited resource of time. Do you want to spend that time maintaining legacy applications, even, even with a lift and shift migration where you're, you're really just picking things up and putting them in the cloud? That's still on you to maintain that um, from a systems perspective. Um, whereas if you can 
re-architect uh, that a little bit, re refactor those applications to take advantage of those services, then you're taking a, uh, advantage of, you know, uh, administration features that, that Azure has built in. You don't have to worry about patching an OS. Instead, you could spend those resources figuring out how to reach your donors better, um, looking at those analytics that Rakesh was talking about and uh, creating new innovative uh, applications to, to help drive that mission that you're your organization is trying to fulfill. I mean, adding uh, resiliency to your application as well as as, as you grow um, your your reach, and you, you don't want your application to falter. You know, whatever it is, your website, um, any sort of application that is the basis of of the operations that you do, you want those to keep pace with uh, the the. The performance that you need, and you know, cloud architectures allow you to do that very easily. Um, you you don't have to go buy a new machine <laughs> to to scale up your application. You can provision things very quickly in the cloud, and also gain cost efficiency as well. Because you know, you'll have times when um, you know your donors are going to be more active. Perhaps you know it's you know holiday season right now. Um, and you know, a lot of people are thinking about giving. So you want to be able to scale those applications up to take advantage of those those times when when people are are really thinking about being active. And even if it's on a very granular basis, maybe people are more active um, in that that way during the work week or on weekends. You can can use the tools in Azure to scale things accordingly and really optimize your cost. Excellent. It's really helpful. I'd love to then talk, I think we've talked about some of the benefits, some of the drawbacks, some of the things that nonprofits are hoping to achieve. I'd love to hear, Rakesh, from you, like what are some of those key tools available in Azure that help with AppMod that make the process easier yeah, or maybe more more simple? It's never, mm -hmm. never gonna be easy, maybe. Right, yeah, so as I was talking about it initially, Josh, it, I, we see this more as a modernization journey that we take our customers through. So that is not you know, a magic eight ball where you kind of say, hey, this is, this is where an application would land. Um, so we, we kind of walk through with the customer and go through what's an, an application rationalization, kind of a, a, an engagement with them where every single application would have to be kind of categorized and classified into where this is where this particular thing is going to fit. And in a few cases where a lot of there are plenty of tools that are available on Azure, which helps us uh, to be able to do it. And once we we kind of get the the hey, this particular application needs to be on Azure or, or, or a cloud. In this case, what we say is there are a, we can use a few tools, right? So the first one that we typically use is what's, what's called AZ Migrate or, or Azure Migrate. And in this case, it typically fits into more of a re-hosting. It falls into the re-hosting um, kind of a, a use case there where it's going to be, as Michael was talking about, it's going to be an easier lift and shift. And, and as long as those applications and those databases and those API calls that you know the servers that are serving serving those API calls can be moved. AZ Migrate is a fantastic option where you can just point, uh, you create a project and you point it to a, your set of virtual machines and 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 disks locally on on premise and you'll be able to move it pretty quickly to Azure. Uh, so that takes care of the the virtual machine side of it. If you're truly talking about using Azure's managed services, um, let's talk a little bit about the databases first because that's where. That's where you have a bit, you know, bigger footprint, especially for the nonprofit side. There are a few services that are that are available there. One is called Azure Data Migration Services, and those kind of comprise of two different services, right? One is called Migration Assistant, and the other one is called Database Migration Service itself. So the assistant, uh, and again, going back to the the word that we like to use, right? Legacy applications. Databases uh, will still be old, right? When I talk about application, you can classify them to, to, hey, you have your application here, and the application is talking to a bunch of databases, right? Reporting database, transactional database, et cetera, et cetera. And those data databases will also be a little bit legacy, right? It'll a little bit, uh, be a little bit older than what is currently available. So for us to be able to kind of transform it and move it over to a managed service, uh, we have to assess the database first. You know, application database needs to go through an assessment. And the Azure Data Migration Assistant helps us uh, create the list of issues or, or what we would face when we do the migration. And we help the customers kind of 
uh, resolve those issues before we actually migrate them using the Azure database migration service, right? So two, two different components there. And the third one, the third uh, thing in play here is the SQL Server Migration Assistant. So think of this more along the lines, okay, I have a SQL Server, a database that's running locally on-premise, and I want to move it to Azure. Uh, so that's 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 more of a uh, an easier move to something like Azure SQL, and and uh, in, in a few cases, Azure SQL Managed Instance, or with a little bit of a refactoring, a little bit of code updates, we can move the reporting database directly to something like SQL Data Warehouse on Azure. So those are kind of the application and database level. I did want to talk a little bit about the, the backup and, and disaster recovery because it's so important for non-profit profit, uh, customers here. There is a service that's available on Azure called Azure uh, Backup and Site Recovery. They are, again, two different uh, services on Azure. Azure Backup is, is the cloud-based backup solution for your Azure virtual machines, managed disks, file shares, uh, on-premise servers. You can use them for a variety of options. And this one is used for migration, uh, migrating your virtual machine, especially for that and restoring the backup data into an Azure virtual machine pretty quickly. Um, so that's, you know, backup is going to be kind of backing up. And site recovery is going to be your cloud-based disaster recovery solution, right, where you have, and especially for nonprofits where they may have their uh, virtual machines or managed services hosted on, on an, uh, for example, on an East US data center. If something were to happen, uh, it Azure Azure takes care of switching it over automatically to a West data center if the if the resources are replicated over there. And this process, this site recovery makes the makes the switch over easier. So even if the data center were to go down, the business would still be up and running uh, on using the West side. Yes, there'll be a little bit of latency, but again, it, uh, the business will be running. The donors will still be able to uh, to contribute. And that and this site recovery is more of a hey click click click, and it takes care of your your DR options pretty easily. So those and there are a couple of other tools available. We can go into the detail, but these are at a higher level that we use on a day to day basis with our nonprofits to to help them through the modernization journey and to actually help them migrate over to Azure. Josh, excellent, thank you. Um, Michael, was there anything else you wanted to add? Any other tools that you had been thinking of, or is that? Yeah, there's there's a couple of them. Um, so they're they're you know Rakesh talked a, a bit about the data side of things, and that's definitely important. There are also some tools, and they're they're tied into Azure Migrate, which Rakesh also mentioned um, around taking your existing web applications um, in a variety of of uh, platforms. They could be you know .NET, they could be Java applications, um, you know. Uh, you know, web applications of many flavors and transforming them into something that can run on the cloud with very minimal effort. Um, I think Rakesh touched on it a little bit, you know, tools that will help you containerize. It basically doesn't, even, you don't even have to touch your code, um, but it'll, it'll analyze the, the traffic that's going to, to your website and figure out how to containerize it effectively so you can move it over to the cloud very quickly. Of course, that's just the first step in that, that journey for that side of things as well, because you're getting into the cloud, you're getting some of that resiliency, but you're still not optimized. Excellent. Well, Michael, back to you here. So now that we're talking about a nonprofit who's maybe committed to modernizing their legacy apps and they're committed to that migration to the cloud, what are maybe a few pitfalls that people need to look out for, like where are the places that they maybe need to stop and um, do some thinking before they um, really move forward. Right. Um, so there are there are a handful that that you know I see frequently. Um, one of the the big ones in my experiences is taking it all at once, trying to bite off more than an organization really should in, in one shot, um, and that that ties into other aspects of or other pitfalls that that kind of occur. I mean, it, it's hand in hand with a limited expertise in the cloud, right? And most most businesses, most nonprofits, they aren't really focused on engineering. They have something else that is their primary focus. So it's natural that they're not going to have the kind of expertise in the sort of activity day to day, right? So really educating um, your organization about what this means, 
trying to dive in and and generate some knowledge around it is very very helpful i think and partnering obviously with with others with experts that can can help with this uh, journey as well is very important. Um, financial resources, um, nonprofits especially, I think, you know, many of them are strapped, right? So you need to think about where you're applying those limited dollars effectively. Um, and, you know, there's there's going to be applications that make more sense um, where you can get some cost savings right away. And then things that are going to be a longer term, term play, um, something that you need to think about over the course of you know, several um, quarters or, or even years, if it makes sense for your journey. Um, and then, you know, some, some other factors that, that especially now, you know, we're, we're all working from home. And, uh, you know, when you're doing these migrations, you have to think about data security, right? You can't be backing up a database across the network to your laptop at, at home. <laughs> you know, that's not, not going to be a, a, a good uh, practice to get in the habit of. It's it's a little better maybe if you're in an office in a secure location, but you have to think about uh, data security at, at all times with this as well. Um, fortunately, you know, the tools that we've talked about, those can all happen, um, you know, remotely. They don't really happen within the cloud um, and your on-premise environment. So, you know, there shouldn't be any any real risks there unless you're you're doing something that uh, is is maybe not advised. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. A couple of things that I wanted to add there, Josh, uh, in addition to what Michael mentioned that I, you know, I talk to uh, nonprofit customers on a, on a weekly basis, right? So they do have a lot of data that they, that they collect, which is good, but they don't pay enough attention to kind of the data quality issues that they have to. And that's something that we feel on, on a day-to-day -day basis where, Hey, you are collecting a, a lot of data, but you know, let's let's talk about your data quality issues, right? You know, which donor, what what is the dollar amount, where are they doing it from? Again, using more social media, using more AI to kind of play with it, and of of course, kind of helping them choose a platform that that is more scalable, something like Azure, where they can scale based on need, which again ties back to cost and, and efficiency, right? If your application is kind of uh, uh, resilient enough so you can actually scale portions of the application to achieve your goal, then you don't have to scale your entire application and you can save a lot on your cost. And we usually uh, achieve that using Azure, you know, as Michael said, containers, microservices, help them redesign their architecture. And, and that's something that we also pay attention to while working with nonprofits. So a couple of extra things that I wanted to add.